Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The voice of the giant. A transcribed adventure of George Valentine. And so from hour to hour we ripe and ripe, and then from hour to hour we rot and rot, and thereby hangs a tale. Right together tonight, aren't you? Eight o'clock, the giant and the midget. And don't worry over there, I'll wind you. I'll wind all of you. And the fat duchess, too, in the next room. It's her turn tonight. Oh, did I... Yes, of course, already, didn't I? Time is money. Time goes, you say. Ah, no. Alas, time stays, we go. (laughs) Oh, the silly, silly. Death chooses his own time. (gasps) Listen, it's not running. The Duchess. Oh, no. I can't hear. It stopped. She stopped. Well, Charlotte, what is the matter with you? Oh, good time. You come galloping like... Be quiet! She's running again. Did you think the Duchess would stop? Oh, no. No. She is not one of those English clocks with the foolish quotations. Time is this, time is... This is my father's collection, not yours. This is my father's workroom, not yours. You go to your own cottage. Why don't you stay over where you belong? I go where I like. The clock should be mine, everyone. Get out of here. Get out. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Charles. Middle-aged lady with a heart like a lemon, like her face. I don't touch anything. I don't stop anything. What do you think happens? What do you think to be afraid of? Thank you for the compliments. I'm going to lock up, go back to the main house. I only come here to look for you, Charlotte. Such a beautiful night. And you should fix your hair. He is come. What? The young man I see you with several times, weekends ago. Walter. Yeah, him, Walter Stanton. He is out by the garden to see you. Well, he has brought friends. You'll have amusement and maybe go out someplace. A young lady... And the man. What's that? Very nice. Very nice. He's brought a man for you to meet. His name is Valentine. His name is George Valentine. Sorry, Walter. Tell your friends I'm sorry. But we drove all the way out from town, Charlotte. Please, I don't feel well. I have a headache. I, I haven't seen you for two weeks since your letter. I'll write again, but I'm going inside. Charlotte, now. we really wanted to see your father, not you. Look, I'm George Valentine. I wanted to meet your father. I'll write you. I'm going into the... Charlotte, what's the matter? What are you listening for? What is it? Charlotte! Oh, you're there, aren't you? Pick, pick, boom, boom. Pick, pick, boom, boom. I didn't mean to leave you so long. I can hear your voice. You're all right, aren't you? The voice of the giant? Well, that's Charlotte. Yes, yes, Miss Brooks, that... Charlotte there, she's 
my wife. What? What? Well, yes, I, I know. I told you I'd seen her only a few times, but three weeks ago... Dear Mr. Valentine, would you please come for a drive to the country with me this evening? There is someone I want you to meet. That was your letter. That's all you've told us. Yeah, Mr. Stanton. I'd be happier with some facts. Well, uh, well, I, I, I'm a teacher, college in the city, summer session now. Been carrying a very heavy load, but on, on weekends I've managed to get out uh, a bit to paint. It's a hobby. I'm not much good. Well, quite by accident, the start of the summer, I happened to stop off at a little train station down the road here, and I met Charlotte that same day. I, I was painting a cow, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, that could be a romantic situation. <laughs> it, it wasn't exactly, but I'm... Well, you can see what I'm like. Maybe not the ordinary ardent lover, but to me, Charlotte is the most beautiful person in the world. I understand. I know that possibly to anyone else. Charlotte lives out here taking care of her father, is that right? Yes, yes, I told you that. Uh, she loves her father very much, she always has. She's devoted her entire life to him. He's a watch manufacturer, isn't he? Well, he's retired now. Been an invalid ever since she's been grown, a bad heart or something. Has to just stay in his room up there on the second floor. Can't even come out to wind the clocks in his workshop anymore. And this uncle of hers, this uh, Tile... Tile Saxeborg? He's a second cousin, really, or something. Helped her father get started in the old days, I guess, a master mechanic. Uh, they don't get along very well. But he's the only other person around. Doesn't sound like much of a life for Charlotte. I came up every weekend. I know she enjoyed seeing me, too. I rented a room at a farm the last few times. It wasn't convenient for me here, apparently. Well, to make a long story short, I asked Charlotte to marry me three weeks ago. I had no idea what she'd say. We'd never been together for long. She never liked to leave the house for more than an hour or so at a time. But she said yes, didn't she? Well, she... She just cried. I'd got a license, like an optimist. The next weekend, I was delayed. Took a much later train. She'd been waiting for me three hours. But the minute I got there, she took me a couple of miles farther on to a neighbor's place. Justice of the Peace was waiting for us. Well, uh, congratulations, only I don't understand... It was the only full, complete afternoon we ever had together. I had to catch the night train back. Two solid weeks of final examinations coming up. And every day I wrote a letter, and she didn't. Go on. I mean, she didn't answer mine. I tried to telephone a couple of times, and I wired. And then I, I got this. Hmm. Here, let's see. Letter? Just these few words. Yeah, here, George. Dear Mr. Stanton, I must tell you to stop trying to reach me, trying to see me. My lawyers will contact you shortly regarding our annulment. Sincerely, Charlotte. Annulment? I know there was a lot for us both to overcome. We're both shy sort of people. We're not well, young, but... It. Maybe you are not so much of a man, Walter. Hello, Mr. Saxeborg. I will not excuse myself for listening. The night is as much mine as yours. Yes, but what did you, you mean by You are too considerate for what you should have. What is yours? But her father is ill. I didn't the want... The nasty father. situation is no place for a gentleman. If you had asked some more questions, be rude, snoop, to find out okay, things... Okay, okay. Then we'll you would know that her father is dead. What did you say? Her... He died of a heart attack. Two weeks ago, the day of your wedding. It strikes like that five minutes before the hour, before the biggest bell rings. The tower clock? Yes, I've heard him like that. But look here, Charlotte, the reason I broke in here to talk to you The was... giant. That's its name. The giant from Zurich. My father brought it all the way over here. The tower had to be specially built. A staircase goes up three flights from the land. Sure, sure. Must be quite a job to wind, but... The biggest bell is nine feet across. I want to know why you won't talk to Walter down there. A crew of men comes once a month to reset the machine. Charlotte, I said I want to know why Stop you... It. Shh. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. Just don't talk so loud, please. I'm trying to listen. All right. I, uh... I understand the giant hasn't stopped running for 300 years. Your uncle tells me your father was very proud of his collection. 
Great believer in time is money, time is this, time is that, time is everything. Walter's in the house, too, isn't he? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, Charlotte, all I want to know is... Where? Well, in the study, but it's not important. It's you that I... My uncle is an avaricious fool, Mr. Valentine. If you don't mind, I think we'd better... Mr. Valentine! Uh, he was looking in the desk, no, the father's I, desk. I only step out for a minute and... I he... was not... Go oh, me, I didn't touch a thing. Cut it out, cut it out. Oh, there he keeps all his papers. Oh, he was reading the letters. I wasn't doing I anything said... of the... Oh. Hmm. Well, that's better. What in the world is the matter with you? You told me to snoop around, didn't you? Prying into the things that are mine when Charlotte is what you are here for. To take her away, to make her happy, to get her... Oh, stop it! Stop it, all of you! Charlotte. I don't want either one of you in this house. Now, young lady, you listen to me. It's my house, not yours. And I don't intend to leave. Not ever. And there's nothing in that desk to pry into. No secret anywhere but in me. Charlotte, please. I'm the one and I don't want you, Walter. You can't help me, any of you. It's in me. I'm the one who left her. Not you and not Tyler. You did what? Left whom? I left him. I left him. I killed him. <laughs> George. Wait a minute, Charlotte. As I understand it... I understood your father died of a heart attack. Sure. The giant. That's what you listen to all the time, isn't it? Only somehow you're afraid of... It stopped, Mr. Valentine. Huh? I left him all day and it stopped. And I wasn't here to fix it. The giant stopped. The voice of the giant. And I wasn't there. So you see, I killed my father. Charlotte, wait! Charlotte! And when the giant stopped again... I will die, too. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When you're driving through hot desert country, 120 degrees in the shade may seem cool to you, but what happens to your car's engine when you're in that kind of country? The fact is, the engine gets even hotter when you stop, and internal engine parts get so hot that ordinary motor oils run away from them. But not RPM motor oil. It's compounded to cling to overheated metal. That's why folks in western deserts will tell you more people prefer RPM than any other brand of motor oil. There are other good reasons for RPM being first choice where driving's toughest. RPM cleans your engine as it lubricates, prevents ring clogging, and stops carbon formation. So for the best engine insurance you can buy, ask for RPM motor oil, first choice where driving's toughest. Ask at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. The voice of the giant. The huge tower clock that overlooks the strange house in the country. The clock whose owner died of a heart attack two weeks ago. But now his daughter Charlotte says that she killed him. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you realize it's Charlotte you must help. And you only hope that Claire Brooks, alone with Charlotte, will have better luck talking to her than you did. I came back, and it was dark in the house, and I was all excited inside, and... Listen. Pick, pick, bomb, bomb. Pick, pick, bomb, bomb. It says that, doesn't it? I've always thought it did, ever since I was a little child. Only when I stood there, down in the hall, I suddenly realized that it stopped. The voice, the giant, it stopped. I ran upstairs, and there on the landing by the door to the tower... By the head of the stairs was Father. 
But I thought you said... He was just standing there. He couldn't talk. His face was... I understand. I got him back to his room. He collapsed. He was dead. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, don't be stupid. Don't... The clock was running again, and don't you understand? What? Yes. After I called the doctor in the back hall, I heard it. The giant's voice. It had started again, even earlier than that. You mean the giant stopped sometime while you were gone, and your father tried to climb up to fix it himself. Of course, he couldn't make it. Or maybe he did. And you blame yourself because you weren't here to look after it, to keep him from climbing those stairs with his heart. If and... it sounds peculiar to you, Miss Brooks... Why not tell all this to Walter? After all, he deserves no. an... I, I don't ever want to see Walter again. You certainly hated your father, didn't you? I did what? What did you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's none of my business. You go now, won't you? All of you. Now you understand. Yes, I guess I understand. Except maybe how it was that the clock stopped. What? And Charlotte... Charlotte, why is it that you still keep listening? What is it that you're still listening for now? A sense of guilt. Justified or not can be a terrible thing. Did you telephone the local doctor, George? He said her father was a very sick man and had a heart attack, period. But I, uh, I suggested he might take a look at the daughter. Yes, I suppose he should. There's nothing I seem able to do. Mr. Stanton, Charlotte hadn't told the doctor about the giant stopping that day. Hadn't told anyone else, I guess. Why on earth do you suppose she didn't tell you any of this, any of it? And you didn't even find out about the death until today. I'm not very good at riddles, Miss Brooks. Or at romance. I think we might as well be going. You've apparently done all you can for me, Mr. Valentine. It's, it's up to time now. You mean it's up to you? Time. Everybody trying to grab onto it in this house. Oh, yes, Miss Brooks, I know. Perhaps in the future I'll be able... Now, just one second, Mr. Stanton. Oh? What was that business earlier of you prying into a father's desk? I told you nothing. Crazy tile socks aboard. Charlotte won't let him in here, but he thinks it all belongs to him. Her father hated the man, so she hates him, too. Financial statements. That's all I could see on the desk. Uh, I didn't even notice. I didn't see anything. Well, I'm taking the train back to town, so... Yeah, sure. We're leaving, too. Good night, Mr. Stanton. George, he was lying just now. I know. it. And so is Charlotte. About something. Or still hiding something else. But there's nothing we can do. She won't tell us. And what is it she still keeps listening for? Haven't you figured that out, Brooksy? The sound of her own death. Come on. We're not giving up so fast. This must be the cottage, George. Yeah. Not much, is it? Guess the second cousin doesn't get much of an allowance. Mr. Soxburg? I don't see any lights. Charlotte's only relative now, Angel. Door's unlocked. But Walter's legally her husband. Only for the time being. Mr. Saxaborg. Out of luck, Brooksy. Not at home. Then the doctor's the only person who can help us get Charlotte out of oh, this place. Wait a place. minute. Hold it. Huh? Look here. A piece of paper. What is it? A letter. A torn letter. Only it's torn roughly. Twisted. George. Remember when they were fighting in the study? Yeah. You want to bet this is it? Walter was looking at something, only Tile got it away from him. It's a letter to Charlotte, Bronson, Burdick, and Locke. What? Lawyers, apparently. Sure, sure, real old line stuff. And they're coming up here, Brooksy, August 1st. That's tomorrow. Uh-huh. Well, they would, naturally, to settle the estate no, and No, more get... than that, Angel. We are delighted with your decision to remain on in your father's house and are confident that you will eventually find happiness there. Please don't feel that we are criticizing your judgment concerning Mr. Stanton. Walter? But again, we must remind you to say and do nothing which would interfere with the annulment proceedings. Our investigation of him and of the circumstances of his first marriage confirms our belief that Mr. Stanton's interest in a woman of your lonely and susceptible position is solely money. And if he gets the opportunity, he will demand the largest possible settlement. First wife? George Walter's never mentioned a wife. Huh. So as of tomorrow, Charlotte will have help. 
Lawyer's in the house. Walter must have seen that letter. That's why the fortune hunter ran out. He wanted to get away. What's that? Oh, the Zurich giant. Five minutes to the hour, Angel. Midnight. Yeah, as of tomorrow, the wheels will be in notion to cut the legal rights away from a fortune hunter and set up the poor little spinster to live here with a clock she really hates for the rest of it. Did you hear that? The giant. The last bell. Somebody's trying to stop the giant. George, run to her! Charlotte! Charlotte, where are you? Charlotte! Where did you... Hey. It's running again. The giant... Honey, don't kid me. Clocks like that don't stop by themselves. That's no electric boudoir number. Hey, who's up there? Who is it? Okay, friend. Three flights to find... Oh! Where are you? Where in the name... Up there! Sucks aboard. Stand there! Stand there! Don't move! Yeah. Yeah. A wrench in the hand of a strong man above you. He's better than a gun, no? All that machinery, I can barely see it. Stand still, I said, while I work. So you're the smart apple who stops clocks, huh, Soxabur? I haven't stopped anything. I only slow up the child. All right, so you're stopping it now, then. I don't care. Because I got a different plan. Buster! I warned you! Well, hammer. Whole carload of tools, huh? The master mechanic. The man who really owns this clock. Don't move! I'm going to... Yeah, sure, that's right. Work away. Man, who really owns this clock? I that's... own all of them. Her father stole them from me. I bet there are two sides to that, Buster. Where's Charlotte? I don't go away with Walter. I stay here, she says. She will keep me from ever having them. I shoot her. The minute that stops, it'll kill her. Wherever she is. <laughs> you think people die because time stops? You superstition. In her condition, the power of suggestion's enough to... Who's up there? Charlotte. It stopped. I heard it a few minutes ago. Shh. <laughs> I'm a realist, Mr. Valentine. No superstitions. I do not get the heavy wheels to stop, but she comes anyway. Yeah, sure. That's what you wanted, just to get her up here. I knew she would come. Come up to Uncle see. Uncle Dial? Uncle Dial? You wanted to get her up here to kill her. They do it tonight before the lawyers come, so maybe you can get this house, get the clocks. Quiet. I wouldn't touch her, Mr. Valentine. We will slip past her, slip down the stairs. What? There's only you who are in danger for interfering. Uncle Tyler, where are you? Uncle! Tyler! Stanton! Walter! Let him come. There is time. Him, too. Time for... Hey, what's that? Hurry now. Slip past him. Not so fast. What's this? Ah! What's the name of... Walter, grab her. Yeah. Oh, I got this guy. Grab her, Stanton. Can't you hear that, Ratchet? Get out of here, both of you. Yes, but what? It's the clock winding up. That giant bell's gonna... Get down those stairs. Fast. It'll strike. The giant. Hello, the giant. Yeah. The realist. You wouldn't have to kill her, would you? Just get her up there next to that bell and lock the door. And she'd be a stark, raving lunatic for the rest of her days. All my life, I wait for her father to die. And then she, she won't go away with a young man. She must keep the clocks, too. But a lunatic would have to leave. Why not? She killed her father. I wasn't here that day. Before she left the house, she must have stopped the giant. So her father... So that, who killed him? Who stopped him? Take it him? easy, Stanton. Charlotte, all right? Yes, yeah, sure. Nobody's but been is... killed. Get it out of your head. What? But he climbed with his Her father heart, died huh? of a heart attack, period. And after what Tyle here did tonight, it'll be nice to wrap him up for a lot of things. But what... Charlotte came home that day and realized her father was standing by the landing by the tower door. But that's also the head of the stairs. Suppose he'd heard her come in, just walked out there from his room, had his attack right then and there. I suppose he could have. Why would he have climbed all the way up to the tower and back? Because the clock stopped? Well, big machinery like the giant doesn't stop and then start up again like she said it did all by itself. No, and nobody stopped it either. I just watched the master mechanic try it and he couldn't. So how could Charlotte or you or anybody? 
Yeah. I slow up the first bells a little. Now, get this straight, Stanton. Charlotte said the clock wasn't running, and then later on it was. Tonight she ran up into the tower saying it had stopped and it hadn't. You mean it's, it's all in her imagination? I mean, maybe there's a simple explanation for that. Oh, sure, you, your mind can make your senses play tricks. But think back. How often tonight has she listened for the sound of the giant? How often has she been frightened because she thought some other clock wasn't running? How often have all of us had to just plain repeat things to Charlotte? Well, well yes, but... it certainly wouldn't be surprising if in her condition, she'd never even guess or want to guess that she's slowly becoming deaf from the pick, pick, palm, palm all her life. Always listening for it. And I'll bet the giant runs on forever. I'm so grateful, Mr. Valentine. I know now I'm not responsible for Father's death. The silly, hopeful delusions I used to cling to. You mean Walter? Oh, don't say that, Charlotte. You wouldn't have been so upset about your father if... if you didn't really love Walter. I know he was married before, but that doesn't... But that was a very unhappy marriage. Only the lawyer... Listen to me, Charlotte. Your old line lawyers think he's a fortune hunter. And he's read their nasty letter and started to leave. But he came back when he was needed. Sure, he told me. His history takes a little explaining. But there's another side to it, Charlotte... He doesn't want your money. And he did come back here to fight for you, didn't he? Well, I... I'd like to believe... Do you know that over our mantle there's a thing that says... I am chained to time and cannot then depart. I know one about time, too. The time God allots to each one of us... is like a precious tissue... which we embroider as we best know how. That's a better one to remember. I think you're right, Miss Brooks. I wonder if Walter's still here. I, uh... (laughs) I told him to stay, Charlotte. And I know one about time, too. Angel, it's time for us to go. When your car begins to squeak, it's saying money, 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 money. It's a reminder that 60% of all auto repair bills are traced to irregular and faulty chassis lubrication. But there's a sure way to avoid repair bills and to enjoy riding comfort throughout the year. Every thousand miles, get a car saver chassis lubrication at a standard station or an independent Chevron gas station. Here they do a job that's thorough. They follow a lubrication chart that's designed and specifically approved for your car. They check more than 50 different trouble points. And they use RPM oils and greases. Also important, they do a neat, clean lubrication job. If you've already driven a thousand miles or more since your last grease job, why not ask for this car saver service tomorrow? Ask for a chassis lubrication at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Loreen Tuttle was heard as Charlotte, Larry Dobkin as Walter, and Herb Butterfield as Tile. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.